Awesome. Thank you so much, ladies, for having me. It is a pleasure to be here. And as Tiffany mentioned, if you go to Hope City, there's a better chance that you know my husband than me because he hangs out here a little bit more. And I wish I could be with you. But I thought since he's kind of my connection to you guys besides Peter and Tiffany, uh, I thought I'd start with him. We've been married for 23 years. I don't know how that happened, but that's the case. So um, my husband, he says that I am the strangest person that he knows. I mean, I'll stand by his side, and he actually, he does make me smile, and he makes me laugh. And I'm sure I do have some strange moments, but the strangest person that he knows, I really do beg to differ. So I know um, there are a few things that I have noticed um, about myself that might make me a little bit different, so I will give him that. Now, I love community. I love what is happening right here. That is not unique. I have literally been in conversations this weekend while hanging out with you guys where I've realized there are kindred spirits in this room. There are a lot of people who love community. But if I'm honest, the way that I love communi community seems to manifest itself in some strange ways. So first of all, sporting events. Now, I grew up watching sports and playing sports and going to sporting events, but I, I don't go for the competition. I can anybody who else who loves community anybody maybe guess why I love going to a live sport event sporting event it's the wave I love the wave I when I see some fan like two sections over and he or she is like to their feet rallying their people they probably don't even they probably don't have people they probably have a couple people they know in the section and they are like getting people to their feet and they are flailing their arms and cheering and I am like waiting from two sections over thrilled that this is about to happen and then it slowly moves across and it gains momentum and then all of a sudden you see it and it's made it all the way around I'm dying this actually happened to me a couple about a month ago we were at Disney World with our, with our family that was actually the last time that Rich was with you guys here at Hope City and we're in that massive theater um, at the studios you know where you watch Fantasmic and this happened and I kid you not, it, the wave, it whips around, and I'm like, woo! And I keep going, and it comes back. You know when it comes back the same way? I literally have tears rolling down my face. So maybe that is a little strange. I don't know. There's another time that kind of this weird manifestation of my love for community came out. And it kind of surprised me, but I was driving my kids to school one day. And uh, <laughs> I was like, this is amazing! And they're like, what, Mom? They don't expect so much out of me at that hour of the day. And I'm like, this, this is amazing. Like, all the adults in our town and all the kids at your school, we all got up and we got ourselves dressed and fed. Everybody made their lunches and we didn't forget the carpool kids. And we obeyed the pedestrian rules and the driving rules. And we did it. We all got our kids to school. And I know that's not exciting, but this is the way I see things. Like... That kind of thing gets me really excited. And so when I'm in a place like this with people like you and you're gathering for that very potential to be able to enjoy community together, I get really excited. And I know like there's a million decisions that have to be made to be able to gather this many women in a room, right? Like. Joelle was saying, you know, you get to leave your kids at home, but you got to make sure they're fed, or maybe you had to get a sitter. I don't know. There's a thousand things that have to happen to, to get you here. Never mind the fact that you look beautiful, and you probably picked up a friend on the way. So we're so thankful that you're here, because the potential for the way that God designed community in this space is super, super exciting. And so I'm so thankful to be here with you guys. Now I'm going to call out my friend Tiffany, because she's kind of done that to me already. This is uh, Tiffany and I on my 40th birthday. And I was thinking this week, like, I'm like, when on earth is Tiffany ever going to turn 40? Because we've been friends for a long time. I feel like she's been in her 30s forever, which is not fair. <laughs> well, my friend Tiffany, guess what? She left me. She left me in our cute little town where we had all the seasons, where we could go to Bible study and then go for lunch afterwards. And where she could put her kids, her little kids, to bed, and I could put my not-so-little kids, leave them at home alone for the first time, and then we could hang out in the evenings together, 
and we would laugh and play cards and chat till all hours, she left me. I don't know about that. And then there's my friend, Pastor Peter. He left me too, and not for nothing, but he can be a little strange. <laughs> Our, the church that we were at in New Jersey, I always used to say that core competency was costumes. We were really good at costumes there, right? <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. I hope you've had this type of person in your life. Peter and I work together. And I hope you've had a friend that you have enjoyed so much that even when you have a lousy day at work, you still want to hang out with them at the end of the day. That's a good friend. So anyways, it's, uh, it's good to be here. But when they left, they started a journey to be here. And I'm thrilled that I'm here with you today. But this is, that's what happened when they left me. And it was a journey towards, you know, Peter leading a church and Tiffany leading a staff and a bunch of volunteers to make this beautiful thing happen today. And I know that that's a good thing because they're creating community and they're creating a place where you and I can feel like we belong and where we do belong. And that is all good. But when they left, no longer was it fun for us to live in our cute little town. And it wasn't long before another opportunity came up for for my husband actually to return to that camp that you saw. And, uh, and we thought, well, they, they went south, we'll go north. <laughs> so we went home to Canada. And, you know, that was a tough season because I didn't really want to know what it was going to be like to live so far from such dear friends. And, and I didn't really want to know what it was like to have to fly to be together. It's a long drive. We've done it before. But it's, it's not that fun. <laughs> But you know what? I didn't know. I didn't know how amazing it would be to support them from afar, to, um, to be able to be a fly on the wall when we were like brainstorming what it would be like to plant a church that was for Sarasota, putting big sticky note chart papers up on the lanai doors and just thinking about this, imagining this. And so sometimes, you know, you put some distance between yourself and those hard seasons and it's so healthy, I think, to look back. Like hindsight is such a gift, right? It's so healthy to look back and to examine and try and figure out how it is you made it through. All that transition, a little bit of loss, if I'm honest, and grieve all of that, but so helpful to, to have a moment to be able to reflect on that. So a couple of months ago, Tiffany asked me to come down and to, to be here this morning. And I thought, oh, man, it would be so, so fun to sit out on the lanai and to, well, I, th I thought maybe go to the beach, but that didn't happen this week. It's cold out there. Um, just so good to be with our dear friends. And, and I knew I needed a break, and I thought, oh, and then I can go to Target, too, which is always a bonus for me. I've been twice in three days. Um, so she texted me, and I thought about it, and then I, you know what I did? I totally ignored her. You see, when that request came in, I was in a season where I just lacked a lot of margin, and it was really hard for me to be thinking about how I could um, fit in just even the preparation of a talk like this. And I really do love to help people, and I would love to be, I wanted to be with Tiffany, but adding something to my life, to my schedule, just felt really overwhelming at the time. So you know what I did next? I kept ignoring her. It was payback because she left me. <laughs> but then my husband, who I'm not sure why I listen to him because he is the strangest person that I know, he called me out and he told me that I had to respond. And so if I'm honest, what I'm doing here today, this is, this is an act of obedience. You know, I, I don't mind being in front of a crowd. I'm actually, I work for a church and I host our services every week. But I work in a multi-site church, so actually our teaching pastor um, is broadcast in on big, the big screen. We meet at a theater. And so, you know, I am a pastor after all, but when it comes to pastoring, I, I am your, if you want to download your life or if you need to pray with someone or need a little bit of advice, like I am your girl. Or if you need me to come and visit your connect group or something, call me. That's, that's how I do this pastoring thing. But speaking or teaching or whatever you want to call this, it's not my, it's not my favorite thing to do. So, motivated by friendship and my husband's nagging and 
because I love Jesus, I decided I would text her back. So here we are. And I have followed Sisterhood online and um, loved being a fly on the virtual wall, if you will, because as you know, this is the kind of thing I live for. This is seeing this group, this room full of amazing people um, is just really good for my soul, to be honest. And so um, just about, I don't know, maybe a month ago or so, Tiffany and I got on the phone because I needed to know, even though I'd follow along, I didn't really know what she was looking for. And I obviously haven't been in the room before. So I needed to know uh, what she was hoping I could uh, talk about or whatever. So we got on the phone and by the time we were able to actually chat, I was actually driving at the time. I was coming home from a visit with my parents and it was actually a tough visit. My mom had at that time just had her first chemo treatment. And so that's new for our family. Um, and it was, as some of you probably know, it, was, um, it wasn't an easy visit. And um, so anyways, I got on the phone with her and she was kind enough to check in on me like a good friend does. Like, how are you doing? How's your mom? What's going on at work? And how's your soul? And after boohooing about how I didn't know what on earth I was going to talk about here today, and I don't think I'm the right person, and whatever, she just said, honestly, Christine, just tell me what, tell them what you just told me. And so when she was kind enough to ask me how I was really doing, I told her I felt like God was sustaining me. God had sustained me. So to be sustained is to continue for an extended period or to continue without interruption. I didn't sustain myself. God sustained me. You see, I'd taken on a second role at work. Um, I moved my family temporarily to that camp uh, for like kind of 10 weeks of intense ministry time. My mom's watch and wait cancer ended up um, being labeled aggressive. Then it was time to move my firstborn to college for her first year. And then I turned around and implemented my busiest season um, in my usual role at work. And I did not have the emotional stamina to make it through all that. It was, it, it's not my, shiny, my shiniest moment, if you will, emotionally. And I didn't even have the strength to get through a day because my, I just wasn't sleeping well. Like my mind is constantly running, so I wasn't resting. But rather than me sustain myself, I really feel like God had sustained me through that. God gave me what I need, needed, and as I reflected on how I was doing through this season, which unfortunately is actually not over, it's just kind of continuing in a new version, he kind of gave me that word sustained. It was like a gift he gave me, almost like, um, I love when people, call, like Peter the other day called me Chrissy, that's what Rich calls me, and that's, for me, that's, um, I find nicknames to be so endearing. I almost felt like this was an endearing nickname that God gave me, you're sustained. So to sustain is to carry on, to maintain, to affirm, to uphold, or approve. And that's what God did for me. And that's what he's continuing to do for me. This was his gift. He is a sustainer. He is someone who has upholded me or maintained me. So when my strength was not what I needed, he sustained me. And he will sustain you and serve as your sustainer and call you sustained. And I wonder if that's what you need to know today, too. I know I'm not alone. I've chatted with some of you already. I know that I'm not the only one that feels overwhelmed in this season of life. I imagine there are moms out there who've got maybe kids that aren't meeting milestones. Or maybe if your kids are a little older, you've had a tough weekend parenting students. Or maybe at work, you're frustrated because you don't feel fulfilled in what you do. Maybe you've had a surprise diagnosis. I know I'm not the only one who's there. And so I wonder if you need to hold on to a verse like this, like I have. Psalm 54, 4 says, Surely God is my help. The Lord is the one who sustains us. And I believe that God sustains us in a few different ways. And so we're going to go through those three ways. He's, his grace sustains us. His word sustains us, and his design sustains us. So first, God's grace. God's grace sustains us. Now, 
good grief. I don't know where I would be without the grace of God. If I got everything I deserve for the person I am, for the things I say when I'm annoyed with my husband, for how short I am with my kids when I lack margin at work, for the days that go by sometimes when I don't do anything to invest in my personal relationship with Jesus. And then there's all the guilt that comes with that, with not performing in those different areas. But you know what? All that is covered by a a gift from the Lord, a grace and a love that comes from having hope in Jesus. I'm a sinner, yes, but I'm his daughter. And because I have that relationship, the gift of that relationship allows me to call him father. And he, he provides that generously for me. So I don't know where I would be without grace. Until Armageddon, that's a book by uh, Billy Graham. He says, um, the will of God will never take us where the grace of God cannot sustain us. In this season, I can rest knowing that he is in this with me. He's with me even when it feels like it's way too much. He's in this with me even when I feel like I'm in a season that I can't bear. He's with me, and better yet, his will is being carried out. And I know that he's sustaining me. So in Corinthians, Paul talked about his relationship with Jesus and how his father had said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And this is Paul, who later wrote tons of letters to the first century church from prison. And in that context, I would imagine his weakness felt like his captivity. You know, but I imagine he probably couldn't think, how is it that I'm going to continue in this context to be able to encourage and build up the church? But I would imagine he reflected on what he knew on his gift from his father, who told him that his grace is enough, that God's grace is enough, and that his power is made perfect in Paul's weakness. So God's grace sustains us. Now, secondly, God's word sustains us. Now, I know that there are people in this room that are um, on all different journeys in life and are different stages of maybe even your faith journey. I would imagine there's people here that have tons of questions and they're not sure what they think about Jesus or the Bible. And then I would imagine there's people like me. Thankfully, I've had the privilege of knowing and following Jesus for a really long time. My parents actually became Christ followers right after I was born, which I find so curious because my name, Christine, means follower of Christ. And I think, isn't that so interesting that they named me that without even knowing Jesus at that time in their life. But I'm so thankful because almost 45 years ago, the legacy of our family changed. And so over the years, I've always seen great Christian morals modeled for me, you know, generosity and loving your neighbors and service. And I've actually seen really great Christian disciplines modeled for me as well. Actually, one of my most kind of consistent memories of my mom is her, you know, after the ages where we could kind of get ourselves ready for school, just her continuously every morning in her chair with her Bible and her cup of coffee, investing in her relationship with Jesus. I remember thinking, oh, I got to ask her something about the day, and I don't want to interrupt. But she was always so gracious, obviously. And uh, she chose to start her day that way. And that was just modeled so well for me. And so at a very young age, when I think back to the memory, based on where we lived, I couldn't have been more than four or five. I remember praying and asking Jesus to come into my life. And so I've had a really long time (laughs) to learn what to do to be a Christian. You know, growing up, I learned that you pray and you, you talk about scripture, you talk about the Bible. My parents did that for us, and so then I, I do that with my kids. And growing up, I learned that you, you behave, you obey. That's just what you do. And then 
I learned that you do personal daily devotions or quiet time, just like my mom did. You do a relationship with Jesus. No, you don't. I hope that shook you a little bit. You don't do a relationship with Jesus. It has nothing to do with what I do. It's all about who I follow. And so when we talk about God's word sustaining us, even in this season where I have had to stir up the will to do, I've realized that when I invest in my relationship with Jesus, when I take the time to continue to read scripture, that gives me a window into who, into the, those reminders that I need about the person of Jesus that I've decided to follow. I needed those reminders because the days were long and stuff was tough. And recently I've been reading through the New Testament because I feel like that's the best window right now for me to, to, to see the person of Jesus and who he was and is. And so consistently I listen or I read and I've just made that a part of my daily routine. But for some reason I got diverted uh, one day and I do think it was a gift from God. And I got, I moved myself over to the Psalms and took a break from the New Testament. And Psalm 62, six, excuse me, 61, two says, from the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the towering rock of safety. If you're in a season like this, I don't know what word stands out to you, but overwhelmed got me. It jumped off the page. That's exactly how I felt. And I actually, in, that, in this season, and in particularly the last couple of months, it's almost like, yes, I'm just kind of doing this. I know I need to invest in my relationship with Jesus. I know I need to consistently commit to reading his word, to doing in that way. Because I wasn't, I'm not always in a spot where my mind is even deep enough to pull at that, but I know his word is worth it. And so even when I would read the word overwhelmed or the potential for safety and the opportunity to be led to that, I felt like the word sustained just kept coming back to me. I got you. You're sustained. And you know what's amazing and actually really rewarding is that when we muster up the courage to be vulnerable and to share that hard stuff, I know it's so tempting to try and put on a front and not worry other people about what you're, what's going on in your life. But because we're designed for this, we're going to get to that in a moment, it is amazing to see what happens, that when you've got the courage to share those hard things, how God uses other people and how they look back and they draw on how God has sustained them in the past, and then they end up sharing those kind of verse gifts that God has given them over the years. And before you know it, they're exactly what you need to hear. And so that brings me to how God has sustained me through his design. So, you know, I love community. This is what we were designed for. You know, when you, you go all the way back to creation, and you see that God himself was community. Once God realized that his creation wasn't complete, he said, let us make man in our image. So God, whose personal makeup didn't even include being alone, thought, let's make a likeness of us. And so God created Adam so that they could be together in the garden. And then he created another human, a woman, so that they could have community together. And the Bible's full of community, full of groups of people living like family, sharing their resources celebrating the ups and the downs of life together. And that's the stuff that I live for. That's, I live for it because that's what we were designed for. So think about this. When is the moment that you are most alone in your day? I'd like to say it's when you're in the washroom or the restroom, as you guys say. But I know <laughs> that that's not always the case for moms of little ones. It's actually when you're asleep. And even then, you've got someone likely lying beside you, or maybe even a little one between you, and you wish you were actually a little bit more alone. But when you're in that deep, deep sleep, what does your mind do? 
you dream and you create stories where you're with people. And they don't always make sense. But I really do think that that is just your subconscious doing what you were designed for. And so in this season, you know, I've experienced God's sustenance through the genuine expression of care. People checking in on me by text and praying for me in person and even stopping me on kind of my most busy day when I work on a Sunday, which is amazing because we know that relationship is way more important than task. And many of you have checked in with me even this week to let me know that you're praying for me and even have prayed for me via email. You know you can do that, right? That's legit prayer. You can pray for people by email. <laughs> and I am I'm so thankful for that. And so like it was planned like to be like this, my friends who were kind enough to check in on me and patient enough to hear how I was really doing, they share God's truth with me. And actually, my Florida bestie, your very own Tiffany, she shared a verse with me that she was praying over me and claiming for me. So 2 Timothy 4, 17 says, But the Lord stood with me, and he gave me strength so that I might preach the good news in its entirety. And so here it is, my sisters. Here's the good news. There's a God who wants to be your sustainer. His son loves you fiercely, and he's desperate for a relationship with you. And his spirit wants to equip you for hard things and to heal you from past hurts and to provide peace for you when you feel overwhelmed. And he's gifted you a community right here that's going to hold you up. To sustain is to carry on, to maintain, to affirm, to uphold, and to approve. So how can you play a role in how God sustains one of your sisters today? You know, maybe there's someone who wasn't here today that you can reach out to to encourage. Or maybe you should simply come back to Hope City tomorrow and connect with somebody that you met this morning. Who needs you to extend grace to them today? Is there a relationship that you need to move towards in order to mend? Or is there somebody that you haven't connected with in a while? You don't have to worry about who texted who last. Scroll back in your phone, look who you haven't chatted with, and connect with them. Extend that grace. Who can you share God's word with to help them carry on? Maybe there's something that you've heard this morning that you can share with one of your kids. Or maybe there's something that you've read this week that you could post online or text to a friend. Who needs to hear your affirming words about how you see God's fingerprint on their lives? Who's someone that you've seen God at work in in the last few weeks that you can encourage? Tell them what you see. Affirm them and lift them up. And for who, even before you go today, can you do God's holy work of sustaining? Maybe it's as simple as a warm hug or a kind word. Those little acts, they're going to point people to a God who loves them. And it's not our work. Surely God is our help. It's the Lord who sustains us. Let me pray for you.